Chloe, what do you want to try first? First, let's go with Urban. Shit. Oh. For real? Yeah, okay. Oh, that was a good idea. Is it trying to tie it? Yes! Oh, <laughs> It wouldn't do that if it didn't know ribbons go on your head. Yeah. It has memories. It has Coco's memories. As long as it never put ribbons on when it was a meteora. <laughs> what, on the shell or something? Let's try something else. Okay, so then, music box. That's gonna be key. I think that's actually the right choice. Mm -hmm. So this is what Coco sounded like when she sang. I'm surprised there was a recording. Hmm. Whoa, it's trying to sing! I wonder if it has the same vocal cords as Coco! Oh, I'm so curious about its inner construction! I think this is showing a strong connection with Coco! Don't you think? I mean, it's hard to deny now. Shut up. Well, well, what an interesting result. I'd say it inherited quite a few elements from Coco, wouldn't you? Yes, we know that already, Judy. Coco's memories inside that thing? Oh, not just her memories. She could be alive inside the unique. Mm -hmm. Or it could be that her consciousness was transferred and then reborn. There are so many possibilities. <laughs> How exciting. Reborn? Are you serious? Yeah. It's not certain. This could all be its reflexes or coincidence. Though as far as coincidences go, there. <laughs> yeah. Too much alike. Damn. I just can't believe it. I don't want to believe it. Good show. I do so like a conflicted fool. Uh. Now, Chloe, what do you think? Of course, admit. At this point. That would be foolish. I think it has inherited some of Coco's attributes. Good. It's getting interesting. Even stubborn Chloe is starting to come around. But that is still a meteora. <laughs> the last time we changed our decisions that it's actually Coco, we like went to space. So it only partially inherited Coco's form and personality since it ate her. Ugh, will you give in already? I think you already know in your heart that Coco is inside Animal. <laughs> Which means I'll let you make the final decision. Whoa. So you can really come clean to yourself to see if you really think Anima is just a meteora. I'm not touching this. I've just raised the inhibitor's power to maximum output. If you use what? this, <laughs> it'll almost kill Anima. That'll trap Anima here, protecting the city as a side effect. Above all, you'll be able to do what you always say and avenge Coco. <sighs> Professor Julie, that's way too cruel. Shut up. I'm talking to Chloe. Now, what will it be? Come on, Chloe. I... No. Not touching this. Can I skip it? Thank you. <sighs> oh, I knew you couldn't use it. So, does that mean you've gotten attached to Anima? Do you actually think it's the reincarnation of Coco? It's not... <laughs> Ah, it's hard to no, turn now. That's just a meteora. But I didn't want to risk an accident. Ugh, my, how admirable. But you have a point. It's too early to draw a conclusion. So stop provoking me then. We need to study it more. There's too much unknown. Which means I'm giving you additional orders. Chloe, go find more items connected to Coco. More? We might be able to draw out more Coco elements by having Anima respond to items of Coco's. Which one's now? A gun? I mean, oh wait, a gun actually might be fun. 
she might shoot me, Still, though. We, like, brought over most of the big ticket stuff. Well, what about the wheelchair? <laughs> I mean... Like, what else was there? Hey, how about we just put it on the wheelchair <laughs> to play around? No, why? <laughs> Man, this is a pain. Can't we just bring the unique over ourselves? Um, It'd be faster. No. Don't be ridiculous. Julie would never allow us to let the unique out. And I don't want to bring it here either. Just having to see it every day. I know, I know. I was just joking. Yeesh. Well, you're not a comedian, so... I don't think it's Coco either. I'm doing this to show Julie that even if we show it Coco's stuff, nothing will come of it. There's just no way it could be Coco. I know. But it's just... When I'm here, it just makes me remember. Remember how Coco used to be here. She was like something out of a dream. And she actually lived here. Where are we in Ariadne? Oh my god! Oh <laughs> damn! <laughs> I can't even reach! But something is lit up here, so... Definitely something is gonna happen very soon. <laughs> and... Well... Looking for her stuff? It's like digging into those memories with a jackhammer, you know? And... Chloe, you've been living here ever since Coco disappeared, right? Doesn't it hurt? Everywhere you look in this room, you gotta remember. I can't let the flowers in the sunroom die. Coco trusted me to take care of them. Ah, <sighs> but you know, sometimes I think about how you're kind of stuck in the past with Coco. Someday, maybe you'll find that you can't leave this room. I will acknowledge. You know, you're right. I'll lose my life purpose after I avenge Coco. That's true. Though quietly spending the rest of my life in here doesn't sound too bad either. The rest of your life? Wait, there are more meteoras out there. <laughs> I can't take them all myself. Don't worry. I'm a designed human. Julie can make as many copies as she wants. Look, that's not what I'm getting at. Enough with the chit chat. If we're not back there in time, Julie's going to let us have it. Yeah, what we're taking? <sighs> I'm not too sure myself. Pyramus and Thisbe. A book that we What's were that? reading? A tale of star crossed lovers. Coco urged me to read it once. So it's a myth, huh? Yeah, that sounds like Coco. What's it about? A tale of a tragic couple, but in Coco's point of view, it's a sweet love story. Hmm. Welcome back, Chloe. Hi. Welcome back. Not a hello. Oh. Is that not strange? It's not strange at all. This is our sunroom, after all. I wouldn't mind in I'm home. Not happening. <laughs> oh, Chloe, come on. I wouldn't mind if you made dinner, did the laundry, and laid with me until I slept, either. Mm, I mean, that's a little bit weird. Do you take me for a servant? Oh no. I take you for a dear family member. That's why I'm indulging in your kindness. Hmm. Read this for me, Chloe. I've picked out a picture book this time. It's a picture book? <laughs> How do I read a picture to you? Pyramus and Thisbe. A myth, but a sweet little love story. A love story? I <laughs> don't like those much. Of course you don't. Put your heart into it, okay? Oh, interesting, we can choose something in the past. Of course I'm gonna read. I'll try. Pyramus and Thisbe, man and maiden in Babylon, loved each other and wished to marry. Their parents, however, opposed the marriage. Forbidden from meeting, the neighbors could only whisper their love through a thick wall. Oh, Pyramus, my love, are you there? I am, Thisbe, my dear. I shall always be by your side. Then, when the moon peered through the clouds and the stars silently twinkled above, the two would share a parting kiss with the wall between them. Your heart isn't in this at all. Uh, I mean, yeah. Oh, Pyramus, my love. Oh, oh my Are God. Are you there? 
I am, my dear Thisbe. Just go to acting classes. <laughs> I shall always be by your side. I'm not You've reading like that. Put at least that much into it. <laughs> no. This is why I'm bad at this kind of stuff. Is this even supposed to be a sad scene? It does look sad from the picture, but... This is a tragic, yet beautiful kiss scene. But they're kissing a wall, right? <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> My, Chloe, it isn't gross at all. Why would you think it is? I bet it's because you've never been in love. Have... Have you, Coco? I haven't. Mm. But I still understand how much they wanted to be with one another. Aren't they already with one another? There may be a wall between them. But if they can talk, does that not count as togetherness? It does. No, it definitely is not. I may have lectured you on the importance of words before, but... That isn't the only way to share your feelings. Sometimes, words are just too flimsy to express emotions. You can't put a tag on love, can you? Information that you can't express with words or text, you must express with physical touch. When your bodies unite, fingers intertwined, when you touch, that is togetherness. Being close enough to share feelings without words. That's where true connections begin. What sort of advanced device would you need to share information without tags or words? That sounds like nonsense. Ugh. Hey. Don't touch me. <laughs> Can you tell what I'm thinking? Not in the least. Well, oh. try imagining it like this. H hey. Skin to skin, Ew. lips mm. to lips, the borders just vanish. We wouldn't need words if we became one, wouldn't you think? We'd communicate everything through our warmth. Emotions, desires, even passing thoughts. Oh, no! <laughs> tell how you feel right now, Chloe. Uh. Your heart's racing. Shut up. Yes, because you're too close Get to me. me dummy. <laughs> Psycho? Pyramus and Thisbe resolved to leave the city the following evening. Let us elope under the mulberry tree at the edge of town, Pyramus said from the wall. Sit on its root and await my coming. I vow I will make it to you. Night fell and Thisbe, clad in a veil, hurried out in secret to the mulberry tree. My, where is my Pyramus? Thisbe sat on the mulberry root, waiting for the arrival of her beloved, not knowing that a hungry lion drew closer. Huh? Looks like it's listening calmly. I wonder if it understands the words. Like, there's no way. This is a meteoro we're talking about. It can't do language. Isn't being read to just putting it to sleep? <laughs> Hell, I'm basically ready for bed myself. Look, Yamato, you're not the one being read to. Hmm. Does it comprehend this? Or does it not? Though it'd totally be fine if Anima's just resonating with Coco's memories. Either way, this lack of reactions putting me to sleep. Hey, I know. The book's an object, but it's still a part of Coco, you could say. Coco was blind, so the sense of touch and memory oh. tied to it must be more meaningful. Chloe? Might be. Hey, hand me that. Now, how about sending this book to Anima? Of course. I love an obedient girl, Chloe. Uh, shut up. <laughs> I wonder what kind of reaction Anima will have. Ooh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Here goes. I feel like she's gonna rip it or something. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, she wants me to read her. Is it asking to hear the rest? Anima 
actually recognizes it as, like, a book? Ha ha ha! That's what I'm talking about! It's gotten a bit closer to Coco again! Uh, uh. <laughs> Pyramus arrived at the bottom of the mulberry tree. But Thisbe was nowhere to be found. Fuck, did the lion eat her? That's the tragedy of it. Beside the tree was Thisbe's veil. Oh my god. It was in tatters, having been torn asunder by a beast. Ugh. This, this cannot be. My beloved Thisbe, what has happened? Has she been devoured by a vile beast? I had promised never to leave you, to always be by your side. Pyramus drove a knife into his chest. What the fuck? Thisbe came out of hiding from the lion and found Pyramus's body. Uh, 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 okay. Seeing that her beloved had taken his own life, she cried and wailed. She knelt before Pyramus and gently pressed her lips upon his cold mouth. <sighs> Not even the wall of death will stop our love. O white mulberry tree, I beseech thee, hold on yourself a symbol of our love. Thisbe took the knife with a cry and thrust it into her chest. What the fuck? With Pyramus before her, the blood from her wound splashed out onto the tree, dyeing its white with crimson. Even now, the mulberry tree bears a symbol of their love, bearing fruit a bright red. Idiots. <laughs> like, okay, they keep that. <laughs> the end. What about it? I can't... It's finished. I told you this was the end. What's the fun in hearing the same thing over again? Hold on there, Chloe. Uh, don't forget this is part of the investigation. Oh, God. A very important job just for you. So do it, Anna. Get says. off this finger of me. Got it. <sighs> How about you try reading the same thing over and over? I'll bring a different one next time. So let's wrap up for today. Yeah, that's a good idea. You really like this book that much? Even such a sad, bad ending? Well, why not? The two became one in the end, didn't they? I guess. I don't get it. Isn't it all over if you die? Do you see this as a happy ending too? <laughs> I'm actually asking a meteora a question. <laughs> You're crazy. I followed Julie's orders and helped her with the investigation of the Unique. The Unique didn't change. It was free. Brash. It would sing whenever it felt like. And it seemed to only take kindly to me. Though there was one change. Oh. What about it? Hmm? It started to ask me to read it picture books. A lot. It's so strange. Anima only shows interest in Coco's favorite books, right? Yeah. It didn't take too kindly to the briefings or news docs I tried reading to it. No, why you didn't try? But it isn't like it goes for anything on Coco's bookshelf. It always wants me to read picture books, illustrated guides, things with big pictures. Is that because... it can understand them? At the very least, Liking picture books shows toddler level intelligence, right? Not really, it's just taste. Hmm. Chloe? Is something wrong? Speak mind, of course. I'm reading to a meteora the books I used to read to Coco. The meteora that looks just like her. The meteora that ate her. What am I doing? <sighs> I don't want to think Julie's hypothesis is right. That Coco's inside of it. You can't deny it, though. But if Coco really is there, then what is she thinking? Seeing me do this. <laughs> She's having fun, that's for sure. Would she feel disgust and betrayal that I'm reading to the being that ate her? Or... Or would she be glad that we met again? But what is the result of it at the end of the day? Ew. Wait for them to get red. Whoa! A real cake this time? On a we spent a lot of time convincing the higher-ups it was for the study. <laughs> There's none for you. Fine, fine. 
whatever. I know real well how low they think of the actual Machia pilots up there. <laughs> Whoa! I seriously feel like I've seen this before. Yeah. Pulling all those strings to get it sure was worth it. Well, Coco did love cake. Right, Chloe? She did often have her servants make her cake. Oh, well, that's true. She'd even have enough made for me. As valuable as cake is. Yeah. And we would always eat it together in the sunroom. Someone like me could go her whole life without so much as tasting cake. And I would say that. I would ask her if it was really alright for someone like me to indulge like this. It felt almost like I was doing something bad, really. <laughs> I'd be at a loss, but Coco would giggle at me and say this. My, do you really think you need permission to wish for happiness? She would always start with eating the strawberries before the actual cake. Oh, you mean on top of the cake? Okay, that's interesting. And I, I could never understand why. I love your voice, Chloe. It's so wonderfully gentle and warm. You. You're always like that. How can you say those things with a straight face? Well, I'm simply speaking the truth. But I have to say, happiness is quite the strong medicine. I get scared the happier I feel. Because I know this time will eventually come to an end. Ugh. My chest... It just tightens so much when I think a day will come when I can no longer hear you. Ah, I've never thought like this before either. I've been a little afraid of death lately, too. And all of this is your fault, Chloe. It's too early for you to be thinking of dying. Especially when you're this young. I couldn't understand her. It was her usual light tone. Yeah. So I responded lightly, too. But if you die before me, I'll read for you in front of your gravestone. <clears throat> okay. You will? Oh, that sounds lovely. It's a promise, then. Was she happy enough to cry? Though she wiped her eyes, she laughed at my confusion. Chloe, I'm so glad you found me. I want you to always be by my side. I still remember. My fun little conversations with Coco, the quips we shared, her soft voice, her smile of joy, the warmth of her hand. I remember it all, yet you'll understand everything if you touch. What a lie. I still don't understand why she cried tears of joy that day. Why did Coco, afraid of death, smile at me in front of the meteora on that day? I still don't understand, Coco. Yes, Anima? <sighs> what? What? Do you know what I'm thinking? I can't know what a meteora thinks. Oh, like touching? It's trying to touch me because... Because she's trying to eat me. No, That's... No. This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. 